So who's ready to cook out here in the desert at my campsite? I know I am. So this is my first cooking video in quite some time, I think in over a year. But I bought a new camping stove and check this out. There's the stove on top, but underneath I have a full fledged oven that holds a 13 by nine inch uh, pan or casserole dish. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, more on the uh, new camping stove oven later. Uh, what I'm going to make is a French onion soup casserole. This is a casserole dish using pasta. And if you're a fan of French onion soup, you're going to love it. I make this all the time at home. It's really easy. Um, what you uh, need uh, is five ounces of penne pasta that we're going to boil here once this water starts to boil. Um, you'll need a yellow onion, a medium-sized one that you've uh, peeled and uh, sliced and then cut the slices in half like I did here and uh, a half a teaspoon salt quarter teaspoon pepper uh, two cloves of fresh garlic minced if you use the bottled garlic like I do that's already pre minced you need two teaspoons for each clove so the recipe calls for two cloves so therefore I have four teaspoons of garlic uh, ready to go and then um, some seasoned croutons uh, about a small handful, something like that. You want to make sure they're not too big. You might have to cut them in pieces. And then you want some thyme. The recipe says to use fresh thyme, but I found using the dried thyme is easier. Um, this is about just under a tablespoon. You might want to adjust this to your own preference because thyme is kind of strong with its flavor. And I happen to like a lot of thyme, so I use just under a tablespoon. And then you need four ounces of Swiss cheese that you shredded some cooking oil to coat the uh, casserole dish, uh, eight ounces of the baby bella mushrooms, the brown ones, not the white ones. And this is the secret ingredient. This is vegetable broth concentrate. It comes in these little packets. And I think each packet is a teaspoon or, or maybe a table, no, it's a teaspoon. But you need two of these. Um, this is difficult to find in stores. I bought mine off Amazon. It's called Savory Choice Vegetable Broth Concentrate. I think you get 10 packets in here. And if you don't use this because you can't find it, the recipe is not going to taste very good. Um, this really adds flavor. It's very strong and it, it really it makes the recipe, it makes the dish. So uh, let's get started uh, cooking the uh, mushrooms and onions in the frying pan. Okay, my water is almost boiling, almost ready for the pasta, and I've started my mushrooms and onions. As I mentioned, I forgot to bring olive oil. You're supposed to use about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of olive oil to cook these mushrooms and onions in. Because I didn't have that, I forgot to bring it. I'm using uh, my cooking spray, which has soybean oil in it. So uh, probably not the best thing, but hey, I forgot the olive oil, so the cooking spray will have to suffice. But uh, you cook these until they get nice and caramelized, uh, a real dark brown color. Uh, depending on how high you have your stove, that might take a while, 10, 12, 15 minutes. So just keep cooking and stirring occasionally and they'll get there eventually. You want to get them nice, golden, dark brown. That means they're caramelized and they are delicious that way. And I forgot to mention, when you start cooking the onions and mushrooms, you want to add the pepper and salt, uh, as well as the garlic. I forgot to do that. So add those in, give it a good mix. And believe me, that garlic and the pepper and the salt and the onions and the oil and the mushrooms makes a great fragrance. See how those mushrooms are starting to get kind of dark brown and uh, softened? And as you cook the uh, onions, they tend to shrink a little bit. So it may seem like you're putting in almost too much onions at the beginning, but um, like I said, they kind of shrink up. You can see they're getting smaller. They kind of condense down so as they cook. So yeah, that garlic in there is uh, really fragrant. Okay, the pasta has about six minutes to go and the onions and mushrooms are pretty much done. This is what you want to go for. Because I didn't use olive oil and use the cooking spray instead, the onions kind of look a little funky than what they would normally, but I tasted them. They taste okay. Uh, I really don't taste much of a difference, but you want to use olive oil. And so that's what you want to get, this kind of consistency. 
So once those are done, you just uh, turn off the heat and uh, we'll wait to the next step. Once the pasta gets finished, then we uh, combine that with the mushrooms and onions and the other ingredients, as well as some half and half to make the sauce. And that goes into the eight by eight casserole dish, which then goes into the oven. You can see the oven uh, starting to heat up. Uh, now it comes with a built-in thermometer, but based on the Amazon reviews, I've heard this thermometer is worthless. Uh, you can't use it. it, it's not accurate at all. I need to get a temperature of 400 degrees to cook this casserole. So I bought a regular oven thermometer and stuck it in there. You can see it behind the, the fogged up glass. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that. And this uh, oven, as far as I know, it doesn't shut off when it reaches your desired temperature. You have to sort of stay with it and turn the flame on, turn the flame off when you reach the desired temperature and to maintain that temperature, whatever it is. So once I get up to 400 degrees on that internal thermometer, then I'll know the oven's ready and then I'll just have to sort of monitor the flame and keep adjusting it so it stays within 400 degrees and cook it. I think the casserole bakes for about 15, 20 minutes. But that's it, so we'll see how it works. I haven't used this yet at all. I'm really curious to know if, if the uh, casserole will be burned or if it won't cook it or if it'll take too long. I don't know, so, uh, but that's the stove. Kind of like how it looks. I like the color combination, red, black, silver. And uh, yeah, it's getting on sunset here in the desert. There's some prickly pear cactus. Uh, you can actually eat those, um, but uh, it's a lot of work to pick out all those uh, thorns or spines. But uh, those can be eaten. And then I'm underneath a tree here by some big rocks. Once the pasta is done, you drain it and then return it to the pan, add the uh, onions and mushrooms, and uh, half of the time, half of the uh, four ounces of shredded Swiss cheese. Uh, then you wanna add five ounces of uh, heavy whipping cream. Uh, I use this Walmart brand, five ounces of that, and uh, let that cook for a few minutes, stir it so it gets nice and thick. And uh, then once that's done, you, you dump it into your eight by eight, by eight inch uh, casserole dish. Make sure you spray the dish with cooking spray. If you don't, it's going to stick and you won't be able to get it out of the out of the uh, out of the casserole dish when it comes time to serve it. Um, but yeah, see how the cheese is melted and uh, that uh, heavy whipping cream is making sort of like a creamy sauce. And uh, half the times in there, giving it a lot of flavor. And uh, so that's almost ready. It looks like my oven is working. Uh, we're up to 300 you got to heat your oven to 400 degrees fahrenheit and then once you dump the uh ingredients into the 8x8 casserole dish you want to um bake that in the oven for about 10 to 14 minutes uh until the cheese is golden brown on top i'll show you that in a second okay this is really starting to bubble so yeah i think that's pretty much done so i turned off the heat and there's my uh, eight inch by eight inch casserole dish coated with cooking spray. And I'm gonna put that into there. Once you've transferred the pasta, onions, and mushrooms to the dish, you take the rest of your four ounce shredded Swiss cheese, which should be two ounces left over, and add that to the top, evenly distribute it, and uh, like that. Got a little bit more here to go. And uh, then on top of this, you're going to put the uh, cut up croutons, seasoned croutons. You can find those usually in the produce department or in the salad dressing aisle. Just get uh, plain regular ones that are seasoned. You don't need ranch or spicy or anything like that. And so that's, uh, you put those on top next like this. You know, when you have French onion soup, it's usually served with a slice of bread on top of the soup. So these croutons kind of uh, add that um, add that quality to the uh, casserole. And I forgot to tell you, when I mixed all the ingredients together, I used the uh, half and half and the vegetable base 
and all that stuff. So the full recipe will be in the uh, description of this video. So uh, check it out. Let's check the oven. Well, I think that's just about 400. Okay, so I just took it out of the oven. There's the casserole. Um, you can hear it bubbling. And then you take the remaining time and just sprinkle that on top like this. But anyway, there's the uh, French onion soup casserole. Now let's get a spoon here and dig in. This actually makes uh, enough for two people. But I don't know, you could probably get four servings out of this if you really wanted to, depending on how on how hungry you are. Check that out. Let's get some more. I'm kind of curious as to how that uh, vegetable, the non-stick spray, because I didn't have olive oil, I'm kind of curious as to how that might have affected the flavor. But, uh, yeah, look at those mushrooms. Okay. So that's what it looks like when it's all plated up. You can see the time there on the croutons and the cheese. And this has a really good flavor. I make this all the time. And uh, let me take a bite here and see how this tastes. Oh, yeah. That's really good. I really don't notice a difference in the flavor from using the nonstick cooking spray instead of olive oil. But you should use olive oil. Yeah, this is really good. It's come out really good, as you can see. Mmm, that's good. Well, like I have always said before, when you're out camping in the desert, you don't have to settle for hot dogs and MREs and all that stuff. Those are good, but why not do something a little more complicated, but not that complicated, and have a real hearty meal at the same time. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this cooking class. The full recipe will be in the description of this video, so check that out. All the ingredients will be listed, where to get them, and stuff like that. So thanks again for watching, and uh, see you on the next one.